We ended up getting married, but in less than a year, she ran off with a guy twice my age. I was immediately consumed with embarrassment, bitterness, disgust, anger, and unforgiveness towards her and this guy. I certainly didn't feel like forgiving them. You do not need me to tell you that pain and suffering are commonplace in our broken world. Much of the pain and suffering we all have endured or are currently experiencing is a result of someone else's bad actions towards us. Quite often, the way we deal with being hurt by someone is living in anger, resentment, bitterness, and unforgiveness towards these individuals. At the end of this video, I will share three biblical ways on how to forgive someone from my own personal experience. But first, why should we even forgive them? Though they may deserve our animosity, other problems arise when we are living in constant unforgiveness. The most obvious is that we are miserable. We may try to deal with this hurt by overeating, not eating at all, indulging in legal or illegal substances, and we usually isolate ourselves from our friends and our loved ones. These negative feelings also tend to overflow towards others in our lives who haven't even hurt us. Living with unforgiveness takes one horrible event and turns it into a raging wildfire bringing destruction to everything in our life. But understand, forgiveness does not mean to minimize the seriousness of the act. Some of you watching this video right now have suffered horrific, unimaginable pain because of someone's actions towards you. But understand, forgiving this person does not mean what they did to us magically goes away. Forgiveness does not mean reconciliation. You can forgive someone without them being around. Some of you have been hurt by people that have perhaps already died or you have no way of contacting them. If the offense wasn't massively traumatic and you can talk to this person, then perhaps telling them you forgive them is a possibility. And forgiveness does not mean doing what is fair. Yes, we want justice. Our human nature tends to desire retaliation, revenge, and retribution towards the person who hurt us. But even if you made this other person suffer, though it may feel good for the moment, it will not last, and you will still be suffering with hatred towards them long afterwards. Forgiveness is a heart issue, and no payback towards an individual who wronged us will heal our hearts. Forgiveness is also not a feeling. It is a choice we must make. As Christians, we are supposed to forgive others because Jesus has already forgiven us of all of our sins. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. So how do we forgive? I could list many times others have hurt me, but I will focus just on one for now that many of you might be able to relate to. I unfortunately have been married before. In fact, I have been married and divorced twice back in my early 20s due to being betrayed both times. In my first marriage, which shouldn't have taken place to begin with, God gave me warning signs six months before the wedding, but I was too young, dumb, and didn't want to be alone, so I ignored them. We ended up getting married, but in less than a year, she ran off with a guy twice my age. I was immediately consumed with embarrassment, bitterness, disgust, anger, and unforgiveness towards her and this guy. I certainly didn't feel like forgiving them. But following Jesus means I'm not just living for my wants and desires, I'm living for Him. And Jesus taught throughout the Bible that we are to live radically different from the rest of the world. So what does that look like? Number one, pray for them. Jesus tells us, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This was hard because I didn't want to pray for them. I wanted revenge. But once I began praying for both of them, my anger and bitterness started to subside. I was still hurting, but I wasn't directing that pain towards them or other people. Number two, do good to them. Jesus said, do good to those who hate you. A few months had passed and I got a call from my estranged wife. She said this guy was abusive and would lock her in a room so she couldn't escape. Then the day she called me, he had gone out of town. So she got loose and I went and picked her up and brought her to her grandparents' house. Now, I had no desire to reconcile with her at this point, but I did try to help her. However, she ended up running back to him a month later. Number three, never retaliate against them. Peter wrote, Do not repay evil with evil, or insult with insult. I ran into her years later at a bookstore in our local mall, and it was for sure awkward. But had I not taken those first steps towards forgiveness years earlier, I would have easily said hurtful things to her in front of all the people that were there. Again, sometimes the people who hurt us are dead, and we can't pray for them, or they're alive but no longer around for us to even try to be a blessing to them. 
or they did things so horrific to us that interacting with them would just be impossible. But we still do not have to live in the trap of bondage that the enemy wants us to live in. As hard as it may be, and as much as you don't feel like doing it, you must choose to forgive them so you can receive the healing and peace in your heart that Jesus freely offers you. Dear God, please be with us as we deal with the hurt that others have done to us. Please work in our hearts so that we can forgive them as you have forgiven us. Please forgive us for the times that we have fallen short and did or said things out of our anger and pain that dishonored you. Strengthen us, Lord, so that we can be the light of the world that you have called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.